chapter 44, The Darkness. Lysias shed more light on the characteristics of his culture and his sensitivity, thereby adding to the joys of the gathering. He masterfully played chords on his zither, reminding us of the old songs and melodies of earth. What a truly wonderful day. Spiritual joys followed in succession, as if we were in heaven. When I found myself alone with the kind nurse from assistance, I tried to tell him of my sublime impressions. Have no doubt, he said, smiling, that when we meet with those whom we love, something comforting and constructive happens inside us. It's the nourishment of love, André. When a number of souls join in the accomplishment of this or that activity, their thoughts mingle, forming centers of living power through which each one receives a share of joy or suffering from the overall vibration. That's why on the planet, the problem of environment is always a factor to be considered in the life of every person. All individuals live according to what they have cultivated. If we daily offer ourselves up to sadness, we will feel sad all the time. If we exult infirmity, we will suffer its harm. Noticing my surprise, he concluded, There's no mystery in it. It's the law of life, both in the efforts of the good and in the activities of evil. From get-togethers of fraternity, hope, love, and joy, we will leave with fraternity, hope, love, and joy within us. But from every get-together involving inferior tendencies where selfishness, vanity, or crime predominate, we will leave poisoned with the destructive vibrations of those sentiments. You're absolutely right, I exclaimed. In your words, I can see the principles that govern life in human homes. Whenever there is mutual understanding, we live in the antechamber of heavenly bliss. But whenever there is misunderstanding and cruelty, we live in hell. Lysias good-naturedly smiled in agreement. At that point, I remembered to ask him about something that had been troubling me for a while. When the governor was speaking to us, he had referred to the circles of the earth, the umbral, and the darkness. But up until that moment, I had never heard of the darkness. Wouldn't it be the umbral itself, where I had lived in dense darkness for many years? In the chambers, hadn't I seen many unbalanced and ailing patients of all sorts, from the zones of the umbral? Remembering that, at the beginning of my experience in Nasalar, Lysias had given me some valuable explanations about my own situation. I entrusted my innermost doubts to him, expounding my perplexity. With a serious expression, he said, We call the lowest regions we know of the darkness. Think of people as travelers through life. A few of them advance resolutely towards the essential object of their journey. These are the noblest spirits who have discovered the divine essence within themselves, and they march towards the sublime target without vacillating at all. However, the majority remain at a standstill. Hence, the multitude of souls who linger for centuries and centuries, repeating their same old experiences. The former advance in a straight line. The latter walk in a big circle. In that movement, redoing old efforts and retracing the path they have already trod, they are at the mercy of endless vicissitudes. Thus, most usually get lost in the forest of life, bewildered in the labyrinth they themselves have traced with their own feet. The millions of beings wandering in the umbral belong to such a class. Others prefer to walk in darkness, because of the selfish preoccupations that absorb them, and they usually fall into precipices, lingering at the bottom of the abyss for an indefinite time. Do you understand? His explanations could not have been clearer. However, I was touched by the length and complexity of the subject and said, What can you tell me about such falls? Do they only happen on earth? Are only incarnates susceptible to falling down the slope? Lysias thought for a minute and answered, Your observation is appropriate. Wherever it may be, the spirit can fall into the abysses of evil. However, in the higher spheres, the defenses are stronger. 
Consequently, the guilt of the wrong committed is also greater. But, I objected, I have always thought that such a fall was impossible in regions foreign to the terrestrial body, the divine environment, the knowledge of the truth and assistance from above seem like they would be infallible antidotes against the poison of vanity and temptation. My companion smiled and explained, The problem of temptation is more complex. The landscapes of the terrestrial planet are replete with divine atmosphere, knowledge of the truth, and assistance from above. However, there are many people who fight deadly battles among the sheltering trees and the fields of spring. Many commit murders by moonlight, insensitive to the profound suggestion of the stars. Others exploit the weaker ones, even while hearing elevated revelations of the higher truth. Earth does not lack landscapes and expressions that are divine in their essence. The nurse's words touch me deep within my soul. In fact, armies usually prefer to wreak destruction during spring and summer, when nature covers the ground and the firmament with marvels of color, fragrance, and light. Armed robberies and murders are preferably committed at night, when the moon and the stars fill the planet with divine poetry. The majority of humankind's executioners are eminently educated persons who despise divine inspiration. Having changed my conception of the spiritual fall, I added, Lysias, could you give me an idea where this region of the darkness is located? If the umbral is connected to the human mind, where is this place of suffering and horror? There are spheres of life everywhere, he answered. The void will always be a mere literary image. There are living forces in everything, and each species of being lives in a specific zone of life. After a brief pause in which he seemed to meditate deeply, he continued. Naturally, as was the case with the rest of us, you placed the regions of life beyond death of the physical body only in the circles that begin on the surface of the planet and those above it but you did not take into account the level beneath. Life, however, pulsates in the depths of the ocean and in the center of the earth. Furthermore, there are principles of gravity for the spirit, just as there are for material bodies. Earth isn't only a field that we can hurt and despise at our good pleasure. It is a living organization, the possessor of laws that will enslave us or free us according to our deeds. It's obvious that the soul overburdened with guilt won't be able to ascend to the surface of the wonderful lake of life. All in all, I should remind you that free birds fly to great heights. Those that get themselves trapped in the vine-filled forest will be restrained from taking flight, and those tied to heavy weights are mere slaves of the unknown. Do you understand now? Leosius didn't need to ask that question. As it was being drawn before my eyes, I quickly analyzed the immense picture of purifying struggles in the lower zones of life. As someone who needs to reflect on his next words, my companion thought and thought, and concluded, Just as we carry in our innermost being the higher and the lower, the planet also has both high and low inner expressions, with which it corrects the guilty and opens the passage to life eternal for those who triumph. As a human doctor, you understood that there are elements in the human brain that control the sense of direction. Today, however, you realize that such elements aren't physical per se, but rather spiritual in essence. Those who like to live exclusively in darkness will dim their divine sense of direction. Therefore, it will not be surprising if they fall into the darkness, for the abyss attracts them, and all of us will arrive at the place towards which we direct our steps.